Sunny Dollar. Still there in Buffalo, huh? Yeah. Well? You uh, get my report on the big robbery case out here? Yes. It looks to me like you've done yourself proud again. Only if you're still there, how come your expense account included transportation back here to Hartford? I, uh, I'm afraid I got a little ahead of myself, Pat. Or maybe just batted a bit before you actually spent the money, is that it? Yeah, something like that. <laughs> well, I think we can overlook it this time. After all, you recovered something over $400,000 that was stolen from that store. Well, let's say I found out where it went. Well, that's the same... What? You mean to say you didn't get that money back? Not yet. Oh, but Johnny... Now, look. Oh, no, no, don't come unglued, Pratt. I know where the money is. At least I'm pretty sure I do. Johnny, so It's aboard old man McNair's yacht in the lee of a point off the Canadian shore of Lake Erie. Now, listen. But with the big storm that's raging up over Lake Erie, well, it's impossible to go out and get them. Who's them? An employee, an ex-employee of the Emporium. The guy who took the money yeah, but you and said his pal that. who helped him get away with it. Well, now, you wait until that storm is over, and by that time, they'll be a hundred miles away. I'll be hidden away in some little cove there on the Canadian shore. Be what? Oh, nothing, Pat. Now, listen, I'll keep on it. You'd better. I'll bring him back here and the money or die in the attempts. You failed to get that money back, and I'll gladly attend your funeral. Yeah, okay, Pat. I'll stay with it. Believe me, Johnny, you'd better. <laughs> CBS Radio brings you Bob Bailey in the exciting adventures of the man with the action tax expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. <laughs> expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. To the Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut. Attention, Mr. Pratt McCracken. Following us an account of expenses incurred during my investigation of the further in Buffalo matter. What I hadn't told Pratt over the phone was that the last minute the Coast Guard had stepped in, forbidding me to go after those crooks in a rented subchaser after all. And you know something? Because of that storm, I'm afraid they were right. In spite of the fact I'd already paid for that boat and could only get half of it back. I, uh, I'll put that down as a credit on this expense account. After all, it's on my American Express credit card. Anyhow, all I could do was sit around my hotel room and wait for the storm to quit. Yeah, sit and wait. Hmm. Come in, come in. Well, Dollar? Oh, hi, Mr. McGann. So you couldn't go after those, uh, those criminals because of this storm? Well, sir, just as soon as it let that up... That's no I... reason for them to get away. Not with my four hundred thousand dollars. Four hundred and twenty one thousand two hundred and sixteen dollars. Yeah, look, Mr. McNair. Quite I... frankly, that amount of money doesn't mean very much to me. But to coin a phrase, it's the principle of the thing. Yeah, sure. So right. how can you sit idly here in this hotel and Well, have you got in touch with the Canadian authorities? Yes, sir. And they and they can't do any more than we can. Also, there's a, well, there's a kind of ticklish international situation here. What international situation? Well, look, by any chance I should be wrong. Be wrong? About what? Well, I mean, well, look, after all, the only evidence against John Harker and his pals so far is the circumstantial kind. I thought you were absolutely certain they took the money. I am, as sure as I can be, until I get my hands on that money. I had all the faith in the world in John Harker. Then you came along and destroyed it. Destroyed it with your, your, your theory that he and some friend of his committed that robbery. Mr. McNair. Well, just let me tell you something, young man. You go out there to wherever he is on my yacht, and you find him. But when you do, you'd better also find proof that he stole that money. I'll do everything I can. Because if you don't, if you or anybody else finds out that he is innocent, Dollar, I'll ride you out of Buffalo on a rail. Yeah, at this point, I was feeling real good, real happy. Everybody was being so nice to me. I was just about to blow expense account item seven on room service for a bottle of scotch and a couple of quarts of soda when the phone rang. Johnny Dollar. Murphy at the Coast Guard, Dollar. Yeah, Murphy. Look, I'm still sorry about having had to stop your chase across the lake, but the old man would have had my scalp. It's all right, Murphy. Nothing you could do about it. Anyhow, if you've been following the radio reports on that storm... 
you might have got yourself into a lot of trouble out there. Yeah, I guess so. And you'd never been able to board a yacht in it anyway. So, you have any ideas? Yeah, I just uh, received a report from our meteorological station. Oh. That storm's going down just about as fast as it built up. So if you want me to arrange a boat for you to go out there, uh, just as soon as we deem it safe. Why? What? Well, the minute the storm is over, the boys in that yacht will start moving. After all, they got 400 grand they've got to stash away somewhere. Oh, yeah, that's true. So by the time I could sail over to where they've been riding out the storm, Lord knows where they could get to. Yeah, but now, Dollar... But now, wait a minute. Yeah, Murph, I just got me a wild idea. Wild enough to work. Oh? The storm is breaking up now? Yeah, it's beginning to. Then, mister, by the time that yacht is able to get underway, I'm going to be right on top of those guys. Huh? How, Dollar? Just remember what I said. Right on top of them. Expense account item seven, three bucks and a quarter for a taxi out to the municipal airport. Along the way, I noticed the rain was letting up, the wind was dying down. At one side of the airport, I found exactly what I was looking for. Within a couple of minutes, was in a little office talking with Tinker Barnum, owner of the Barnum Flying Service. Sure, Dollar, complete equipment for it. Winch, line, slings, everything. Good. You see, we not only give a lot of demonstrations, instruction, that sort of thing, but now and then a Coast Guard calls on us to help with an actual rescue at sea. What'd you say your price is? $300. That includes me at the control. Okay, then it's a deal. Okay, we'll take off just as soon as the wind goes down a few more knots. Oh, uh-huh, sorry, Tink. We got to take off right away. But if the wind starts blowing up again... It won't, and I got that straight from the Coast Guard. You're sure of that? I'm sure, so let's go. Well, I don't know if the tower will give me clearance. Then forget the tower. Well, well now, wait a minute. 400 But I could lose my life in this dollar, get in a lot of trouble. Well, there's nothing else taking off from the field right now. I know, but that flight that just came in had a pretty rough time of it. Tell the tower it's an emergency, a rescue operation if you have to, but please, let's get going. Now, listen, it could be very dangerous. All right, that's a chance we'll have to take. 500 550 Uh, keep talking. Well, after all, it's 400,000 bucks, this thing. What? 600 bucks. Take it or leave it. Okay, Dollar, let's go out and warm up the old windmill. Attaboy. It was my first ride in a helicopter, and brother, what an introduction. I've been aboard regular planes in rough weather lots of times, but the way that wind tossed us around, picked us up and let us down, and with nothing but the broad wind chopped surface of Lake Erie below us. Well, it was an experience, to say the least. First half hour, Tink was fighting the controls every inch of the way into the gray, ominous scudding clouds that raced by overhead. And then, all of a sudden, the clouds left us. The sun came out in all its glory. The most welcome sight I've seen in years. And the air calmed down. And then finally, standing out clearly under us was the Canadian shore. Look ahead, Dollar. Over to the left a bit. Yeah, Tink. That neck of land, that peninsula sticking out into the lake. Yeah, I see it. Long point. And the yacht was supposed to be riding out the storm in the lee of it. I don't see it. The lee side would be the... I do. Look, moving along the far side of the point. That's the cruiser, Johnny. But is it the right one? Come on, take us down to her. Right. Meantime, I'll get the sling ready so you can drop me down to the deck. Right. I still don't know how Tink figured he could pilot that helicopter and at the same time lower me to the deck of the yacht can handle a winch. But he swore he'd done it before in rescue operations, and he could do it again. He made a couple of close passes, and I was able to identify John Harker at the helm, a tough-looking character standing beside him. So it had to be McNair's yacht. Then I suddenly realized there were not only two of them, but they both knew who I was, knew all about my interest in the robbery. I could be at a slight disadvantage. Sure, Dollar. They'd shoot you dead before you even hit the deck. Think I can't remember when a lie has ever paid off or even worked. I've got to try one this time. Well, listen, we could simply keep a line on them and find out where they go. Yeah, and what happens when the Zig Speeder runs out of gas? Yeah. Oh, well, I can uh, radio the Canadian Coast Guard. Oh, no, by the time they get through the necessary red tape to hold those boys and get here from wherever the nearest station is. Yeah, I see what you mean. Okay, then, Johnny, open the door. Use this megaphone. Thanks. Here. I'll uh, hang around over them. Right. Arthur! Arthur! He's cut his power and cut... 
puts a hand to his ear. Parker, this is Johnny Dollar. You hear me? You hear me all right? Wave with your right hand. It's okay. He can hear you. I still want you to know the police have found the man who did the robbery. They shut him down. He waves okay. Yeah. Parker, they haven't found the money yet. McNeer says you will have to blow from the bridge, and the bridge will all the way to Rossville. Hey, what was that, Johnny? You get that, Harker? I said that... Look, I'll drop on down there. Stop your engines, and I'll drop down to your deck on a line. You get that? Emotion's okay, Johnny, to come ahead. Let me down there, Tinker, and make it gentle, will you? You got your gun real handy? Right. I still don't like this, but down you go. Swinging around into that copter, hoping I'd hit the deck of the boat below was no fun. It was a pretty small target, and the yacht was still bobbing heavily. I think was an expert, and a couple of minutes later, I saw the deck slowly coming up to me. Just steady that boat a little. Better give me a hand when I get down there. Sure. Don't worry. We'll take care of you. Come on. Get ready to pull the release cord, Johnny. Steady now. Steady. There you go. What a way to make a little nice work, Dollar. Let me give you a hand. Thank you. Yes, well, Billy here takes your gun away from you. Oh, no. I got it, baby. Now, just one funny move, down and I'll pull this trigger. You see what I mean? Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah. Just one funny move. Okay, Harker, now what? You know something, Billy? I think it might be a very good idea for you to pull that trigger anyway. All right, Tristan, Billy, make sure Dollar hasn't got another gun on him. That's just what I'm doing, baby, just what I'm doing. And it's all right. He's clean now. What did you take me for, a dollar? A fool? Did you think I'd be crazy enough to believe what you were shouting down from that helicopter or whatever it was? Well, as a matter of fact, Harker, most of it was double talk. And did you think I'd believe that old fool McNair sent you out here? Yeah, that's a laugh. That cod-fisted old coot. Right, shut up, Billy. So that story the police had gunned down the man who stole the money from the Emporium. Don't make me laugh. Would you like to see that money before you go, dollar? Like to run your fingers over 400 G's? Yeah, Billy, why not? Well, it's all stashed away in that chain lock up for But you ain't never gonna see, you're never gonna see anything anymore. Can I kill him now, Hawker? Can I, huh? No, no, wait. Huh? Stop waving that gun around. That helicopter gets out of sight. Okay, sure. Well, what's it hanging around for? I don't know. Dollar, get below with the captain. You stay here, Billy, but keep that gun on through the door where that fly boy can't see it if it comes any closer. Sure. Go ahead, Dollar. Sure. Why not? Now, you just sit right there on that bunk and don't make a move, you understand? Because all I got to do is pull the trigger in here, and neither your pal up in that chopper and nobody else is going to know it. Has he gone away yet, Harker? No. No, he's circling around again. Well, make a sign to him then. Make a sign everything's okay. Go ahead, Harker. That'll send him away. You just keep Dollar under control. Now, don't you worry about him. You just go ahead and sit in that chopper. Okay. Maybe I'd better start digging up something that'll make Dollar sink to the bottom. What? Well, you know, the lead I'm going to fill him with might not be enough. You see what I mean? Yeah, very funny. <laughs> Go ahead. Only watch him. He's tricky. I can handle him, baby. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Why, what's the matter? That, that cop is coming back again. Well, I'll shoot him down. I can hit him. Oh, no, you won't. Then get us underway. Give her the power and get us underway. Then that guy will know everything's okay. Maybe you're right. I'll try it. Talk, I sat there on the bunk looking into the muzzle of Billy's 38. Knowing these were desperate men with a lot at stake. That if I made one false move, he wouldn't hesitate to pull the trigger. 
Even if you took the gun off me for a couple of seconds, there was nothing in reach I could use for a weapon. You could even pick up and throw it. Good work, Billy. Chopper's going away again. <laughs> I told you so. Can I shoot him now? Can I kill him? I better wait a couple minutes more to make sure. Want to well up find some chain or something to tie around and make him sink. In the locker, under that bunk you've got him sitting on. Okay, okay. All right now, darling. Get off of that bunk and walk up to the front of the camp. Go ahead. Don't forget I've got this gun on. Yeah, the copter was going back to shore. Time was running out. Then I saw them. A duplicate set of controls there at the front of the cabin. Steering wheel, throttle, everything. Go ahead, Dollar. Keep your hands up over your head. Up high. Rising off the bunk, my hands over my head, I half stumbled as though from the motion from the boat. I lurched against the wheel and grabbed it and swung it hard up the board. Hey! The boat swung around crazy. Hey! What do you think you did? Hey, let go of that wheel! How's he shot, Billy? Shot! What's the matter? Billy! Billy, what's happened down there? Plenty, Harker. And if you want some of the same. Wrong, Dollar. Dead wrong. Because I have a gun, too. Not another step. I see what you mean. Too bad you didn't take Billy's when you... Billy? Billy? Okay. Okay, okay. I'm a okay. But if you think I'm going to wait any longer to kill this guy, you're crazy. Okay, Billy. Go ahead and kill him. You know that. Look, look, look. That cop. What? What's coming right out of him? Smash into us. Stop him. Shoot him. You bet I will. No, you fool. The pilot of the cop to the fly boy. Shoot him. Right. Ow! My last chance. They turned the fire tinker up in the copter. I lunged against Billy, shoved him over the side. Yeah! By the time Marker turned to fire at me, I was on top of him, swinging with everything I had. Oh, I'll kill you. Oh. All right. What a rest. Oh. All right, Johnny. Okay. 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 You want to pick up what's left of Billy out there in the water? Sure, Johnny. After all, that's what I told the tower. This was the rescue operation. See you back in Buffalo. Yeah, like Billy had said, the stolen money, all of it, was stashed away in the Ford chain locker. So after tying up Harker with all the line I could find, I started the engine of that beautiful yacht. But then suddenly realized, well, uh, put it this way. If Tinker and his copter hadn't stayed with me, so help me, I'd never have found my way back to Buffalo. So, expense account total, including an even thousand bucks for Tinker Barnum, and please don't argue about it, plus the trip back to Hartford, plus the previous charges you haven't yet paid me for, $1,800 even. And believe me, it's a bargain. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Now, here is our star to tell you about next week's story. Next week, two beautiful girls. One of them a sweetheart. And one of them a killer. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, originates in Hollywood and is written, produced, and directed by Jack Johnstone. Heard in our cast were Lawrence Dobkin, Bartlett Robinson, James McCallion, Dick Crenna, Junius Matthews, and Gil Stratton. This is Jim Matthews speaking. <laughs>